All right, welcome to Wide Awake Radio. I'm your host, Charlie McGrath. It is the 11th day of March Friday, Open Topic Friday. Obviously, it's going to be uh, dominated uh, more than likely with the events going on in uh, Japan uh, and around the world, for that matter, with the, uh, with the tsunami making its way to the U.S. today. Um, so we're going to get into that for a minute. Reginald is going to be joining us. We have uh, 96 people in the chat room. If you'd like to join them, go to WideAwakeNews.com. Click on the Wide Awake Radio link. Uh, we've changed the chat room around a little bit. We've just kind of spruced it up to match the home page. Um, and I know some of you guys, you know what? I'm, I'm so ticked off right now. You might hear it in my voice. And I'm going to get into it in a second. Let, let me, uh, I'm going to get through this. So we changed the chat room around a little to make it a, a little more like the home page. And uh, we, we've shortened the scroll rate. So uh, pay attention if you're, if you're in chat um, because you don't have a lot of time to read messages that are responding to your, uh, to your uh, uh, comments. And uh, I'll, I'll talk to Bonnie after the show, and we'll see if we can't lengthen that a little bit for the next show. <clears throat> okay. Here's the deal. I, I just, just finished shooting a video. Uh, I'm going to post it uh, during the break probably. I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely sickened uh, by the two articles that I dropped into the chat room and the guys who were in there a little while ago. Um, you probably saw that story in there. The, the first one uh, is uh, Barney Frank. <sighs> that Barney Frank, who's complaining because the new Consumer Protection Agency that came out of the Dodd Frank bill, the, the bill that bore his name. The same bill that uh, was supposed to fix the financial institution after the mortgage meltdown that Barney Frank said uh, wasn't going to happen because Freddie and Fannie were in good shape. This same Barney Frank now comes out because the cameras are on and we're a year and a half away from an election. So Barney Frank's out there saying calling or housing the new Consumer Protection Agency inside the Federal Reserve is a joke because the Fed failed the last go around. Chris Dodd at least had the common sense uh, to realize that the ship was sinking and flee to Hollywood so he could head the Motion Picture Association of America. The banks love this. They love the idea that the Fed is housing the new federal or the new uh, consumer protection agency because it alleviates their concern that an independent entity would ignore the health of the financial system. Well, let's look what's going to happen when we have the Federal Reserve housing the new agency that's going to protect consumers. It relates directly to another story I dropped into the chat room. And the title of that one is Federal Reserve Expected to Claim No Homes Have Been wrong, Wrongfully Foreclosed. I'll drop both these stories in again in a minute. They'll also be attached to the video that's coming up right uh, after the show. The Federal Reserve is going to come out and say with their very strict guidelines of what uh, abusive foreclosure is, that no foreclosures were done uh, wrongfully, fraudulently in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had a million foreclosures last year. The record amount ever in this nation. More than likely only going to be surpassed by the ones we have this year. The, the majority, the vast majority of these foreclosures can be linked directly to the too big to fail, pumping loans out, begging people to borrow money, making all kinds of extraordinary claims and deals, uh, uh, and selling them, chopping up, selling them around the world, knowing that these, that these things were going to eventually blow up and fail, knowing full well they were going to turn around and say to the government, fix this or we will tank the economy, and they did it. And now you've got the Federal Reserve, who's supposed to be looking out for things like monetary policy, uh, worrying about inflation, and worrying about full employment in this country. And they're going to be the ones overseeing what is wrongfully uh, considered a foreclosure or not. We are screwed, blued, and tattooed with the current administration, with the past administration, with the oligarch, uh, oligarch cabal running this country through the Federal Reserve. It has to be stopped. I mean, it is a monster literally destroying this nation. We're going to have the same Federal Reserve that never saw this implosion coming. You know, and if you believe that, pull your head out of the sand. Because they absolutely knew it was coming. Hank Six-Gun Polson knew full well as Treasury Secretary what he was doing when he went to the President with, or the Congress with a three-page note. Excuse me, a three-sentence note. Give me the money or else. And since then, we've been a spiral downhill to integrate all the financial power in this country into the hands of a very, very small number of people. 
You can count the two big to fails on both hands, and you can count their leader on one hand. And you can count on this. That leader is going to look out for the institutions that are too big to fail. They're beyond systemic. They're more important, and they're overt about it at this point. They're no longer going to sit back and say they're going to do the right thing. They're going to come out and straight straight up to your face say, you're a loser, your house is foreclosed on, I don't care what the reason is. Sure, the bank received 100% uh, for the value of that loan. Sure, they receive interest, uh, free money. Sure, they can't fail. They never fail. The, their failure will be put onto your back. But we're still throwing you out of the house. And if you don't like it, tough. That's where we stand in this country right now. I know that the, the, the big news of the day is a 9.0 earthquake, actually upgraded to a 9.1. And, and my heart goes out to the, the, the thousands that it must be. They're reporting hundreds, but it's got to be in the thousands of people um, who are dead because of this earthquake. But we have our own tsunami uh, sweeping across this country, and it's called austerity. And these criminals who brought us to the position that we're in right now, if they are not stopped, this tsunami will drown everybody in this nation. It might not kill you, but you're sure going to feel like you're living in a banana republic. You're sure going to feel like uh, you, you're the lowest standard uh, of living on the country because that's the only way that they can make this work is to get everybody on the same playing field. Complete and utter insanity. And, and with, the, with the velocity of... Uh, Political crisis, economic crisis, natural disaster, man-made disaster. You really have to start wondering how long do we have left. 44 million people on food stamps, and yet they can still pump out information like we're on the road to recovery. 400,000 people file for first-time claims. It's no big deal. Wall Street doesn't even bat an eye. I'm speechless at some points, and this is one of the points. Everything that could go wrong in this economy has gone wrong. If you do any investigating on your own at all, you will see this is not a a general cyclical recession. This is an outright, utter depression. No doubt about it whatsoever. And the tragedy, the tragedy is there are people crying in the wilderness that this is coming, and you better be ready for it. Yet most won't listen. The vast majority will just sit back and let it happen to them. <sighs> All right, let's bring on a good friend of the program, excellent uh, host in his own right, uh, Reginald, also known as Dimcad from YouTube. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for joining me tonight. Well, thank you for having me. I was listening to you, and I was thinking about the, the current situation. Uh, it, it seems to me... The current situation is pretty much this. They're talking about the media is spending a, an economic recovery. Uh, the government is spending an economic recovery. They're basically skewing the numbers. They're removing unemployed people from the official unemployed numbers to make the numbers look better than what they actually are. And the fact of the matter is, when you go and look for a job right now, there's really two types of jobs, well, really three. One in medicine, if you're if you're a nurse or somebody, then you can definitely find a job, well, in, in certain areas. And then there's the highly uh, specific, uh, very specific, uh, highly skilled type of jobs where it's, you have to, if, you're, if you have the certification in this one particular area, then you can get that exact job. And there's a lot of specialized uh, jobs, not a lot, but there's specialized jobs out there. And then you have the third category, which is basically eight and nine dollars an hour. Eight, nine dollars an hour. These are basically the jobs where uh, they want to pay you eight dollars an hour, nine dollars an hour. You have to wait a few weeks for somebody to call you, and you only get twenty hours a week. I have a friend. I have, I have friends who are who are still waiting. They some have been hired supposedly by organizations such as um, uh, Home Depot or whatever. I'm not going to go over too many names and. They've had to wait four or five weeks to get a call back. Uh, they, they've taken two interviews, and they've taken a, a urine test, and they're, they've been told that they're going to be hired at a certain period, and nobody's called them back, and they're still waiting. Uh, and th- these are the best-case scenarios right now in this yeah. country, uh, <laughs> at least in my yeah, part Reginald, of you're, the you're, woods. You're 100% right. That That is exactly what's going on. You're 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 either uh, specialized in a field that's lacking, and you know the the, the healthcare sector um, through through this recession, you know, so-called recession, this depression, 
uh, has managed to be the, uh, if there is a bright spot, it is that one. But, you know, they're systematically trying to break that down as well uh, with Obamacare and then, you know, kind of Obamacare light with a thousand uh, waivers that are that are floating around out there. You know, this thing's, this thing's I, I, I don't know what, where the, the health care uh, legislation is going to end up. Uh, but I really think it's almost to the point where it doesn't matter. I mean, I think if you're trained in the medical industry, uh, a nurse or a nurse practitioner or, or even an LPN, uh, then you have a future because that's always going to be needed. If you're an electrician, I think you'll have a future. If you're a mechanic, I think you have a future. But, uh, you know, it is going to get to the point, even if you're one of these trained, necessary people, where, Reginald, that, to me, the handwriting is, it, it isn't handwriting. I mean, it is giant print on the wall that we will all be whittled down to uh, the lowest possible wage uh, across this nation, and it will be done in the name of austerity. And I know, uh, you know, through some comments uh, between us back and forth, like on my video supporting the, the, work, the union in uh, Wisconsin, um, that I've come across as this big union guy. And it's funny because, I, you know, I've been in the private sector for 20 years, uh, I've worked in some shops that were union. We had Teamster uh, yardmen and drivers and truck drivers. And I've never been – I've been part of, uh, you know, negotiating uh, for their wages, not on their behalf but against them, you know. But I still see I, – I, I can see what's coming. You have the uh, powers that be, and in this case I'm going to say the Koch brothers, who, who absolutely <laughs> want to dismantle the, the public sector unions – and I'm going to say this first. They're going, they want to do that first. But if you think it's stopping there, it, you are out of your mind. It's incrementalism. They're going to go after the public sector unions first because they're the absolute easiest target, especially when they've been pumping out the fact that, you know, we're at a $1.65 trillion deficit uh, this year, $1.4 last year, so forth and so on. So it's easy for the American people to be, uh, you know, swayed into hating these groups and saying, yeah, let's go after them. But it isn't going to stop there. Then it will go to the unions who represent 7% of the workforce in the private sector. And then it's going to go to, well, everybody has to pitch in and sacrifice. You're always, we're already hearing this rhetoric, and we will see more taxes on this, that, and the other thing until uh, you have a situation where you can't find a job, and if you do, you're in line with 100 other people, and the guy standing in front of you said, says, I know you paid $200,000 for your medical education. I, I, I just I can't pay you anything more than $7 an hour. I can't pay you anything more than the minimum wage because there's too many people behind you, and uh, if you don't want it, somebody else will fill in, fill in the shoes. Well, the, the problem with that is you get to a point where the system just doesn't work, where you have a total breakdown because it's really simple. What is my incentive to go along with these rules if I don't have a realistic chance of finding a job that will allow me to take care of myself and my family? And it's not like I'm having a bunch of kids or anything that I can't take care of. I mean, if all you have to offer me is $8 an hour, $10 an hour, and I, I spend, what, five, four or five years of my life in a university uh, or, or, or two years getting a certificate and I have all this debt, then what incentive do I have to go along with the rules? If I can't find a legitimate means of participating in this society, then I will look for another means of participating in in the society, and I think you're going to have a lot of educated people, a lot of talented people uh, looking for illegitimate means of participating yeah. in this civilization. And the yeah, civilization it's... is going to fall apart when people no longer have the sense of to even go by the rules. Because if I have to go by uh, the rules, but Goldman Sachs uh, gets a slap on the wrist uh, from the SEC, then, you know, what, inc what incentive do I have to really go along with the rules? You, you don't. You don't, but you know what? It, it, you know, there, I think you're right. There's going to be a really smart class of criminal uh, in this country. We'll have the uh, we'll have the smartest uh, organized crime th that there is on the planet, because a lot of people won't. They'll they'll look for under the table. They'll look for black market. This isn't you know this isn't Charlie and Reginald making it up. I mean, this has happened uh, in countries around the world forever. I mean, the the former uh, Eastern Bloc had a very thriving black market, uh, which most of the population participated in. Uh, but you, you you still will have, I think, Reginald, the majority of people who will go, they'll, you know, they'll step forward because they want to work and they will take the job because they won't get into, you know, the organized crime or, or uh, doing whatever they have to do uh, illegally. They'll, they'll do the legal route. Uh, 
Um, but it'll be all that there is a, as an option for him because I see social safety nets, especially in this next uh, after this next election cycle. I see social safety nets uh, going by the wayside. I mean, you know, 99 weeks of unemployment, forget about it. Uh, 44 million people on receiving uh, food stamps, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I mean, I think we're going to see a massive, massive uh, reduction in social safety nets. And it will happen uh, under the thunderous <coughs> applause of the, of the neocons. And, and well, a lot I mean, of people will... Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that, that it'll, there'll be a thunderous applause because all this fear, fervor will be generated uh, blaming the people who are on these, uh, these programs. Who, who are on, you know, 99 weeks of unemployment. <clears throat> we already see that. But uh, uh, it's, like, it's like blaming... Excuse me, I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm having a coronary. All right, I'm... I'm <laughs> it's like you're blaming, you're blaming the victim, and, and I hate to say the victim word, but in reality, I mean, everybody who's... All right, not everybody, uh, because somebody's going to call in and say, you know, their uncle had jobs under the table, blah, blah, blah. The majority of people who can't find a job... Uh, they literally can't find a job. They're looking. They, there's nothing out there for them. So, you know, they're, they are victims of this economy that has been imploded. Uh, and the too big to fail who have imploded it are going to be the ones uh, generating the money for the advertising campaign uh, to implement austerity on the same people that are already trying to survive in the busted economy they created. So how do you avoid a meltdown? You, you say that most people are trying to... Uh, go the uh, the legal route. The problem is if you're only paying me eight dollars an hour, and food prices are going up, as we're seeing, and gasoline is going up, it's going to cause. It may, we, we may get to the point where it costs more money for me to drive to this job than to actually be there. So I mean, oh, I have, what happens next? Oh, I, I I think we I think there's a meltdown <laughs> before then. I think we have. I mean, I think we have civil unrest. Uh, we have it now. It's already begun, um, and it gets worse every single day. Uh, but I think we do have a meltdown, Reggie. I think we we have a meltdown, and we, you know, and who knows where it goes from there. I mean, do we do we end up like, uh, you know, like Egypt, where we're where it doesn't matter if two dollars a day or a hundred dollars a day, if we're spending fifty to sixty percent of our money to buy food, you know, we are impoverished. And then you know, the ultra elite own everything at that point. If you don't, you know, if you're if you're making eight bucks an hour, you are making. Eighty thousand dollars a year last year, Reggie, and now you're making you know twenty thousand dollars a year. You're still going to work. You just don't have a house to come home to. If you do, you're you're paying uh, you know fifty percent of what you make in order to live there, and the other fifty percent of what you make in order to feed your family. So you're walking to work, or whatever the case may be. Yeah, uh, pretty much, and uh, it's just a matter of timing. Right now, I think we're seeing the local and state governments cut back. Uh, dramatically, they're basically falling apart. They, they, they're laying off. We, so we're seeing cities that that have high crime, but they they're cutting off half their uh, police department. Uh, Canton, New Jersey, is a a good example of that. You're seeing uh, entire fire departments, the police departments, almost get cut entirely. So we're seeing right. that, that big cutback, and that's going to cause a lot of private a lot of private businesses that relied on that income, relied on that consumer spending. That's a cutback as well. They're going to. Uh, it's going to be more of a ripple effect. So we'll see if this is something that's going to really bring down the entire economy. And we're going to have to look at oil as well. But I think there's definitely yeah. going to be a ripple effect. And uh, rehashing uh, current uh, economic events. Somebody asked in the chat room. Uh, first of all, there's 130 plus people in there, uh, and with the shorter scroll area, um, I, I read a few questions, but I, I didn't even have time to write them down. So 877. Three four two six six seven three. If you have a question you want to ask, please just call in. Uh, that will guarantee that you'll get on and you'll get your question asked. But I did read somebody saying they wanted an update um, on what's going on in Japan. So I pulled this headline uh, during the break. Snap analysis. Japan may have hours to prevent nuclear meltdown. I dropped that into the chat. Uh, Japanese officials may only have hours to cool reactors that have been uh, disabled by Friday's massive earthquake and tsunami or face a nuclear meltdown. That's the first paragraph of it. Uh, so, you know, I'll drop it into the chat room again if it's uh, scrolled way out of existence already. But, uh, it, Reginald, I, I want to answer your question first uh, that you posed about the firemen burning down uh, the house. Let's blame that guy. I, I, and I guess in that scenario I do. It, here's here's where I stand. I, I, I get really upset when I see these divisions uh, being drawn in the sand 
uh, de- depict uh, American against American. You know, uh, we are, we, we're all in the ship together when the too big to fail hit the iceberg. You know, so we're all going down together. Now, I know there's corruption in unions. Like I said, in, in my uh, experience in my life, I've dealt with them. I know there's corruption. And, and I know that uh, there's corruption in government. There's corruption in the private sector. And I'm, you know, I'm obviously anti-corruption. Let's root it out and perp walk people that are corrupt and officials that are corrupt and union leaders who are corrupt. My, my point is this. If we, if we uh, fall prey to the divide and conquer strategy, then we end up blaming each other. Nothing gets solved. And we never look at the core reasons for why we we're brought here. You know, nobody's talking right now in Wisconsin or Indiana or Ohio or Michigan. No one's talking about it, its monetary policy and the too big to fail firms that led to the dismantling of the infrastructure, the manufacturing base of your state. If nobody's talking about that. They're blaming unions, they're blaming private, they're blaming public. You know, everybody's blaming everybody rather than, and, and the deflection of the mainstream media is working brilliantly. You know, it, we can trace all these problems back to the creator of the problem and, and, and then focus on getting rid of that system. And then we can squabble about, you know, should we have unions, not unions, uh, stringing people uh, or hauling them off to prison if they're, if they're found to be, uh, you know, corrupt and stealing from the members of the union, whatever. The problem is we don't look at what is the cause. It, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that to you. You do. I do. Most of the people in this chat room probably do. But the mainstream absolutely does not. They want to sit here and blame the teachers union or blame the whatever. Fill in the blank. It doesn't matter. And blaming them isn't going to fix it. Taking from them isn't going to fix it. Uh, increasing taxes 100% won't even pay the debt off. We have to go after who brought us here. That, that's my answer to the question. Well, I mean, they're, they're corporate-owned, first of all. The mainstream media, for the most part, is mostly corporate-owned. And they're mostly Absolutely. owned by corporations, and the corporations have an investment in the current system. And the Federal Reserve is a big part of the current system. Uh, Goldman Sachs and Bank of America, these are all big parts of the current system. So when you have... Uh, your corporate owners, when you're receiving a paycheck from a corporation and they have a uh, a stake in the current system, then it, it does make sense for them to sort of tell you to sort of take this spin on this story and focus on this and focus on that. And you're, you're not going to really go against the system when you rely heavily upon the system. And this is how the media has been pretty much corrupted in America. That they're not really representing the interests of the people. They're representing corporate interests. So you have to understand that when they start to put their spin on everything, uh, this is uh, why they're doing it. And you can't really expect uh, true journalism from people who are, are completely controlled by corporations. No. I, no, that yeah. I mean, 90% owned by six corporations. I mean, you know. I know you've said that in your videos, and so have I, and it's backed up. It's proven, and that number is uh, just promising to get smaller. They're, they're threatened by alternative media, uh, not any one of us uh, in general, but all of us as a whole, they're definitely threatened by, and, and I think that's why we see uh, an attempt to control what can be, uh, you know, what, what we can do on YouTube or what we can do in alternative media uh, altogether, and I think that we're going to see that uh, ratcheted up. Um, in the not too distant future as well, and it'll be labeled as you know, this this is where the next attack was brewed from, from the internet <laughs> or from whatever internet radio or whatever. But uh, you, you can see that coming down the line. Reggie, I, I want to get into. Um, I, I I I sent you a note today because I just had caught a flash of this reactor leaking. Uh, at, at five of them uh, at this point. Long. They're worried about five reactors. Five of them. Yeah, I just came across uh, something on uh, on U- uh, not YouTube but um, Yahoo, and they're worried about. It says Japan declares emergency at five nuke reactors. So, oh, wow. may not be five facilities, but there's five reactors that they're worried about. And I'll put a link in the just in the actual chat room so people can check it out. So it just seems we have uh, you know <laughs> one thing after another, and, and I mean. You've been doing this longer than I have. I, I, I mean, did you ever think we'd see this kind of velocity with uh, 
events going on, and, and not just little events, not just like something only the, the alternative crowd notices, but, but world-changing events are, are almost on a daily occurrence at this point. Uh, I, I didn't think it would happen quite like this. I, of course, we we thought that certain things were going to happen, but you never really know exactly how they're going to happen. And I'm looking at this Japan situation. There's two power plants that they're worried about, and there's five reactors at two uh, power plants. And they're worried about the cooling system. And, of course, if they don't get it cooled down to a certain point, they're going to be looking at a meltdown. And, yeah, it's just crazy. It's like every week there's something popping up, like whack-a-mole or something. Always something new, <laughs> always something you didn't really expect. Yeah, and, and today was supposed to be, you know, and th- this is, I mean, when it's this uh, when it's this hot and heavy as far as stories hitting the, hitting the wire and, and the mainstream media is globbing on to whatever's next, although, you know, of course in this case the, the uh, earthquake, uh, that, that deserves to be the, the leading story. But the day of rage that was supposed to happen, I guess, in Saudi Arabia today, I, I have not heard one word about it. I haven't seen anything about it in the media. Um, and as far as I know, uh, you know, it was it kind of fizzled, but you can be rest assured of one thing: we're, we're not done seeing bloodshed uh, in the Middle East. Uh, have you have you following this, Reginald? Well, yeah, I came across one story where they were talking about uh, the police actually fired on a crowd. I just want to try to find yeah. that. That is one story I did um, come across, but uh, other than that, I didn't hear yeah, a lot about what was going on. Yeah, actually, we we have that story up on on the front page. It's it's uh, in. It's a somewhat of a sensational headline they fired on the crowd. When you read the story, it was uh, Saudi security forces uh, shooting at uh, protesters with rubber bullets. Uh, but uh, still, I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's obviously uh, a, an attempt to not have them take to the streets. We're, I, I think we're on the verge of seeing – oh, and I talked to uh, Dex today, too, for all those who tuned in last night to hear Dex. I had a, a, a day job function uh, come up last night, and I had to attend it. I couldn't get out of it. I almost called Reginald and uh, Warren to see if they wanted to co-host, but it was too short a notice. Uh, but uh, I did talk to Reggie today, or uh, I talked to Dex today, and he he was excited. I mean, he was excited. He he was saying, you know, if something big goes down this weekend, um, which you know he's he's halfway anticipating something large happening, and I and I couldn't uh, I couldn't quite pull it out of him. Uh, what he was referring to, and I don't know if it was another earthquake or if it was uh, some kind of uh, eruption worse than we've seen in the Middle East, but uh, he's talking Monday might be a, uh, a massive day uh, for the metals and a horrid day for uh, the market. So uh, we, we might get him on earlier next week if, uh, if this weekend turns, to be, turns out to be uh, anything close to what he's uh, alluded to. All right, we're going to take, uh, Reginald, you up for some calls? Oh, yeah, always. Okay, uh, Howard in California. Hey, Charlie. Yeah, how you doing, Howard? I'm doing fine. Hi, Reginald. How are you? I'm doing very well. I hope you're doing well. I'm, I'm doing well. I uh, I just wanted to bring something to your attention that uh, I'm not sure is is widely known, but... The, uh, the teachers around the country, massive layoffs are coming, and being that all of these employees are on a yearly contract, the contract right. expire in July, and so we're looking at probably massive layoffs across the country of 15 to 20 percent of the educational force of America, and I think that will be the final, you know, straw on the camel's back. Well, these well, that, are eight dollar an hour jobs. So, if these people lose their revenue, if these people lose their jobs, then you're going to have a significant amount of people walking around with less money to spend. So, that's going to affect the local businesses that relied upon them, uh, the restaurants. That's also going to affect uh, also organizations that did business with the actual the actual government. So, yeah, this is going to, like I said, we're going to see how this is going to really affect us and. That's, this is what I meant by an actual collapse at the local and state level. We're seeing that fire departments, police departments, and, of course, uh, teachers get cut back significantly. So there's going to have a ripple effect. Yeah, you're, you're definitely right. I mean, uh, uh, Rhode Island came out, and I think it was Rhode Island, gave pink slips to every single teacher uh, because they have to serve notice that they might not have 
uh, a job in 2011, uh, in uh, the still in uh, 2010. So they all got pink slips. Or I'm saying that wrong. 2011, they have to warn them for potential layoffs in 2012. So every single teacher got a pink slip. Uh, not all of them are going to get let go, uh, but they have the potential to let them all go now since they've uh, basically served notice on them. Uh, I, have family mem- I have a family member wh- who's a teacher, uh, just graduated from college uh, two years ago, a uh, year and a half into her, her uh, first job teaching, and she's told that there's uh, probably not enough budget to support her job this coming year. I have a brother who works for the, uh, for the Veterans Administration, and, uh, you know, they're, they're on borrowed time as it is right now. They have an extension, I believe it's to the end of next week, uh, and we'll see uh, if, if he has a job starting next week. He'll be on furlough if they don't. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely, Howard. It's, uh, we're going to see, I think, a roll across this nation, and it could, it could happen a lot faster uh, and, and be a lot more dramatic if the current situation in the Middle East is blamed for uh, a rising price in oil and we go back to like 140 150 160 dollars a barrel, uh, that will stop the economy. Um, and, and, you know, if China, of all places, who reported a, a trade deficit last month, uh, which is very unusual for them, uh, they usually are a, a giant surplus, uh, trade surplus, but they reported a deficit last month, and there's uh, rumors of their economy overheated. Or it isn't rumors. They're raising their interest rate to slow it down. Uh, but, they, you know, there's rumors that their housing bubble is about to burst. If that happens, there goes a lot of uh, uh, world economy. So, you know, teetering. Teetering is what I would call it, Reginald. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I, I want to know, uh, here's my question to everybody else at this point. Uh, what is it going to take to really start the whole backlash because there's there's a period people have to understand there's a period between an actual collapse and the period in which people realize that there has been a collapse for example in 2007 the latter part of 2007 we know that the recession really sort of kicked off then uh, nobody nobody in the mainstream media or the government were, were really acknowledging this uh, until later on and we didn't really see the effect of that until uh, the m- middle of 2008. So there's a situation where, you know, there's a collapse, but then how long does it take people to really realize that? Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. And, and you know what? I'm glad you're out there, Reginald, because uh, a lot of people have forgot what has brought us the collapse that we're in right now. You know, they, they think of the 2008 implosion as ancient history, and they'll be w- more than willing to accept the uh, notion that it's, uh, you know, Al-Qaeda or whoever they want to blame in the Middle East for the next leg down because oil prices go back up to 160, 170. Howard, are you still on the line? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm uh, just enjoying listening to you guys mull it over. Okay. Okay, well, did you did you have anything else you wanted to uh, wanted to chime in with? No, no, I, I just thought I'd throw that out there because it's one of those time bomb things that I, I don't think yeah. a lot of people are real clear on, uh, you know, that it, it's coming, it's in the works, and... And while uh, the school districts normally play this game with the pink slips on a yearly basis, uh, they rescind them for the most part at the end of the year. But this year is different. This this year is really going to happen, and we're going to have a 15 to 20 percent cut across the nation. And all those people that that's going to happen to are starting to hunker down now and stop spending. So you're going to see yeah. a gradual uh, decrease uh, over you know over the coming months, and then you're going to see a shut off come July. So that, that's well, I just I, wanted to bring that up. I, I appreciate anyway, thanks, it, and I think you're you bet. Thank you, and I, and I know guys in the chat room, uh, Reginald. I hope you can hear me okay. Brett's letting me oh, know yeah. that. Uh, okay, he's letting me know that he's having trouble hearing me with our feed. Um, we had something happen in the chat. Uh, we went from uh, 130 down to, I think it was in the 70s, instantaneously. And a lot of people are saying they got kicked out. Uh, if you did, get back in there. It seems to be working okay now, but uh, I apologize for that. It has happened in the past where uh, we've got a bunch of people in there and suddenly it drops 60 or 70. Um, I think you can still hear us. You just, you're not in the chat. So uh, I apologize for that. And, Brett, I have all my outputs turned up uh, to the max so maybe uh, maybe over the weekend you and I should uh, uh, try to get this problem fixed so we can hear each other, I guess. Um, Reginald, I had a, I, I, over the last few days, we've uh, had our annual show uh, for the company I work for. And it, it's, uh, 
it's a buying show. We, we basically bring all of our customers in and, and uh, offer them deals in the construction industry, uh, offer them deals for the, uh, for the coming summer. And we, we were fortunate enough to have a speaker at this show this year put on a seminar yesterday. And I'm not going to give his name um, or the company because I don't have his permission to do either. But I, I'll say he, he's with a, a company that uh, in 2005 had nearly $2 billion in sales. And in 2010, he, they had almost a billion dollars in sales. They've seen, obviously, a massive uh, decrease in uh, in their sales in, in the construction world, in the lumber world. And I, he, he gave a absolute brilliant uh, speech. And it was really interesting for me because it, it, it straddled two different worlds. You know, here I am at night, I, I come on the radio or I come on the Internet, and I talk about what's going on with the economy. And never has the mainstream or, or the day job been so close to the alternative uh, stream, I guess, or my nighttime job. It used to be uh, when I would come on here or, or on YouTube, uh, and I'm sure I'm sure you see this happening as well, Reginald. And we talked about p- potential collapse, preparing for the end, uh, preparing for the end of the financial system as we know it, preparing for a dollar collapse, preparing for a lifestyle change, uh, um, preparing for no longer being the number one economy in the world. We, you know, people looked at this like you're nuts. This is America. We always recover. Well, now, you know, this this head of a billion dollar company, you know, he said that they fell for the same uh, game they had for recession after recession, which is it's going to be 24 months long. On the backside of it, we'll be able to acquire some of our competition, retool and keep going. And when it uh, when 24 months turned into 36 months and when 36 months turned into 48 months, they started to look at things a whole lot differently. And then, I mean, this this is a person in control of thousands and thousands of jobs uh, across the uh, United States and Canada. And when, when they're sucked in to the mainstream, when they're sucked in to what Wall Street uh, is putting out there, what the government's putting out there for statistics, and they're basing their business models on that, um, it tells you how controlled and manipulated our economy is. But it gave me some hope. That you know this big player, as I like to you know, think of him as, is realizing our monetary policy. He even brought this up in in his speech. Our monetary policy is leading to a collapsing dollar. They've shifted uh, their model to not looking at uh, exporting from Canada to the United States anymore, or exporting from the United States uh, throughout the United States as the number one market in the world. But they've increased their business shipping material to China. Fourfold. Now we had a nice conversation afterward about what happens when China collapses, but that I mean that's a different story. But we see uh, big business now starting to big. And, and let me make this note: this was completely privately owned big business. Three people own this this company. It wasn't a Wall Street firm. Matter of fact, he's seeing his Wall Street competition, the ones uh, that uh, Wall Street own, uh, fall by the wayside or get you know merged up into uh, ever bigger corporations. But he, they're waking up to what's really going on. They realize that this economy isn't getting better. They, you know, he's the first to say, you know, they come out with this job statistic saying that it's down to 8.9, and now in their in his CFO's office, they 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 don't believe these numbers anymore. They laugh at the statistics come out because they know they're not true. So Reginald, I I think we're seeing we're getting to a point where it's almost a divergence between alternative and mainstream. And uh, that's terrifying because, you know, I think we're all going to come to the same place at the same time. But unfortunately, it's going to be uh, we're all realizing we're in collapse together. Well, I mean, this sort of reminds me of those stories about the Soviet Union where uh, they would broadcast this information as news. And at a certain point, people just they pretty much just stopped listening. They would just turn it off or, you know, <laughs> they just pretty much tune it out. I'm noticing that people are changing their attitudes as well. Same people used to say things such as, "Oh well, this is America. We'll be back. You know, we'll we'll recover. Uh, we just don't quit." People like that are now. Now they're trying to get water filters. Now they're trying to buy yeah. guns. I mean, it's, yeah. it's really or, funny or, or they're moving. watching these people. <laughs> yeah, or, or they're or they're moving out of the country. Brett, I hope that's better. I, I tweaked that a little bit. Um, we we've got about four minutes, and I know Christian's been holding for a few minutes, so. Uh, Christian, let, let's go to you and, and get your question in since you uh, took the time to call. Hey, 
Hey, Charlie. Uh, <clears throat> thanks. I'm, I'm calling from San Francisco. I just want to make a quick point. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely with you on that. People definitely do become in, indoctrinated, and, and, and then they just start spitting with uh, mainstream media more than wants them to uh, basically spit. But uh, but I just want to make a quick point about uh, what you mentioned earlier about how they're basically trying to conquer and divide us. I I think uh -huh. people don't really understand how serious this is because what it's going to come down to is you, you hear people mentioning about civil war, and what's going to happen is that it's basically going to come down to us that are in the know versus those who are still asleep, and that's the, the whole c civil war part of it. And, and, and these guys behind the, <clears throat> the scenes like the CFR and, and these, these elites that are running things are just going to sit back and watch. So I think right. the fact that they're doing things out in the open now and not really caring about being prosecuted is just kind of uh, giving us the <clears> – <throat> should give us the sign that things are more serious now because it, things are moving a lot faster and so if we don't convince people, at least just actually just start getting out there as, as a group and just start connecting, I mean, that's what it's going to wind up being. So you can have us versus the useful idiots. And I just wanted to get your comment on that. It's like how, how can we start uh, or organizing in a lot more <clears throat> uh, in a manner that's a lot more more uh, critical and uh, can uh, warrant like what's what's going on with the world right now. Yeah, it's a, that's a that's a real hard uh, hard one to uh, try to describe how to do. You know, even even and I'll be brief so so uh, Reginald can get an answer in too. But even in this community, you know, there's uh, it, you almost have to take a a, a a contrarian point of view. You know, I know in my work, I work with mainly what I would consider to be conservatives. They probably all vote uh, Republican. And whenever they want to start talking about these dang teachers unions or these dang this or that or the other thing, I try to have the contrarian point of view because they know I'm not some kind of, uh, uh, you know, bleeding heart, whatever. But I, I, I say, well, wait, you've got to understand that, you know, the, the reason why we have so many people on food stamps or on welfare or on unemployment uh, isn't because they, they're not, you know, the vast majority of them are lazy. It's because uh, uh, there's no job, and there's no job because our economy has been decimated. And our economy wasn't decimated by a $3.5 billion deficit in Wisconsin. It was decimated by $30 trillion plus, uh, and money will never know how much truly the, the amount is, uh, by a bunch of gangsters on uh, Wall Street. So I try to take the contrarian point of view. I try to, you know, articulate it, to make it make sense. Um, and, and then at the end of it, you know, say we're all in the same boat together.